Hi. Uh, so just sharing my screen, sir. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. So as communicated to you, Floace is a people analytics tool. It helps you understand about uh, how your teams are performing, which teams are performing really well in terms of effort, focus, which teams are not performing so well, uh, are slightly inefficient, and how do you improve their performance in terms of focus and their focus. So there are two modes in which Floace can be installed. One is the transparent mode, and the other one is a stealth mode. In the stealth mode, the user does not know that Floace has been installed. It's done from the back end. So it runs like a back end process. Uh, even if they try to kill the process, the process will start again. So this is a stealth mode kind of an implementation where the user has no interaction with the system, can't see anything. Uh, now that depends on you whether you want to go ahead with such kind of an installation or you would like a transparent installation. Some customers have also started with the stealth based implementation and then gone on to the transparent. Some people have kept it separate. There are two sides of teams or two sets of teams where some teams need to be on the stealth mode, some on the transparent mode and so on. So you can decide that as per your use case. Now, let's say in yes. my case, it's the transparent mode that has been installed. So there is this Floace app that you see that has been, that I can see over here that's running. Now if I open this app uh, with transparent mode, there's one feature which uh, users really like, which is called the privacy mode. So if you want to give this to your users, you can. Now let's say if I go into my privacy mode, automatically everything turns into green color. This bubble that's there, it turns green color, shows me privacy mode. So your nothing is getting captured, not even locally. So this is my true essence of my personal space and I can do anything. Let's say if I want to watch um, uh, something on YouTube or if I want to probably go on uh, Netflix or anything that I want to do, this is my personal space. There's nothing getting captured over here. Now, every 10, 15 minutes, this will tell me if there's activity on the laptop. This will tell me that you're in your privacy mode. So in case you're working, please come back into your work mode. So this is like a prompt that it gives the user that in case you're working should not be the case that your entries are going in the privacy mode because there's no way to retrieve them. Now, let's say if I'm done with my break time and I want to go back into my work mode, some people also do this where you want to cap privacy mode in the working day for two hours. Let's say you want to give them one hour of lunch break and one hour of break time. So you cap that privacy mode because you don't want them to stay in privacy mode throughout the day. So now let's, say, now let's say if I want to come back into my work mode, I just click back into my work mode and that's all. So from a user perspective, this is all the user has to do. There is nothing, there is no other change in the way in which the user works. Now, what you get with this is the whole analytics of how much time have they really spent working, how much idle periods are there, uh, how productive or focused have they been on their apps that they need to use. So my dashboard is go gozo.floase.in. Your dashboard could be, you know, uh, whatever your company name is, .floase.in. So you'll have your own dashboard to look at. And here, this is the data for yesterday's uh, day for me, which is sixth. And as you see over here, I have spent eight hours, 12 minutes working yesterday, which is negating. By working, you mean uh, the uh, privacy mode was off and my laptop was on. My laptop was on and I was not even away from my laptop. So there is an idle time parameter that gets configured. Let's so, say that parameter is, yeah. So, so basically you record the, uh, basically flow of the, uh, you know, any key which has been clicked or mouse. Right. No, not flow exactly. We just sense if there's no mouse movement or keypad activity. If there's no mouse movement right. or keypad activity for a consecutive period of 10 minutes, the machine automatically goes into idle mode and those 10 minutes along with whatever period that they were idle for, that gets taken as idle period until they get back. Understood. To the Understood. And now if I am not in the privacy mode, but I was still, you know, browsing YouTube, etc. So then how does that happen? So that is not captured at all. If you're in the privacy mode, it's totally the uh, sense of, you know, that's the, that's the private mode. Nothing is getting captured. It's as well as no, no, not in the privacy mode, not in the privacy mode. Okay. But if I'm, if, so basically if I'm not in the privacy mode, if I'm in the normal working period, okay. Okay. but say okay. I'm browsing or I'm watching Netflix then. Okay. Then it'll come into the other, as you see over here, the other is not the focused area that, uh, that's supposed to be. So for me also, as you can see, 16 minutes were in the other area. So out of eight hours, 12 minutes, uh, 16 minutes was not productive. I was probably doing something. Achha, like yeah. So just take bar, just, uh, just go to each category there. Huh? Haan, haan. So you are saying communi only. So that so you communication. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Why. Yeah. So communication is three hours, 12 minutes, marketing, developer tools. Got it. Sales. And uh, how does your system know, like, if it is sales or if it is not? Yeah. So that that depends on your categorization and the way you do it. 
So you define your categories, you define which apps and which URLs belong to which categories. So that's like the one time configuration that you will have to do. Uh, and it comes with a pre list of apps and pre list of, you know, categories already there. So all you need to do is pick and choose. So if I go into the administration section now, and if I go into settings, so for our workspace, uh, this integrate, sorry, websites and apps, um, you'll be able to see that these are the work categories that have been created for our workspace. These are for us. Mm -hmm. So you'll get some categories that will be, that'll be there in your workspace. And then you can decide uh, what all categories do you actually need. The ones that you don't need, delete them. And you can even def define the color. So let's say if I want to change the analytics color or if I want to create a new category. And if I want to, let's say I associate blue with productive. So I can select blue and I can select blue shades of blue for all my productive categories. And I need not have anything else. I can just have them as productive. And anyway, whatever is spent other than that on those areas automatically goes into the unproductive section. So it's a clear divide between productive and unproductive for you. So let's say if I go into the app section, now you'll be able to see that each app has been bucketed into uh, a particular category. So as you can see over here, if I filter by the type of apps, these are analytics apps, these are browsers, these are communication apps, then there are design apps, developer tools, and so on. And right. even if one of these apps, let's say, is not added in your system, it's quite easy to add them either from this uh, plus add app section, or even if from the uh, the web dashboard itself, you can easily add them to your uh, workspace. And similar kind of a process exists for even websites. Again, for websites, you want to categorize only the websites that you actually use for work. You don't want to categorize anything else. So these are the websites that we actually use. We spend the most amount of time on meet.google.com, app.slack.com. And obviously this includes the sub URLs also. Um, and if I go into the other section, you'll see lots of games, lots of like scribble.io is a game that people play a lot in our office. Then there's some animix play again. So there's like a lot of different things, but let's say if there is something work related. Now I know ads.google.com is work related. It's a marketing tool. So I can press on action over here. I can select, okay, this is probably a marketing uh, tool that people are using. So let's put marketing and I can save this. And then it goes and sits in my categorized bucket. Fantastic. Yeah. So this is how you configure these categories and that's how your data gets populated that you saw earlier uh, as per the categories that you have defined and how productive. So now let's say I see Aniket's time. He's a developer that we have. He spent only 33% on developer tools, which is not a good sign for me. I clearly, even though he's worked hard, he's had eight hours, 29 minutes of work without really spending, like these are, this is negating the break times. So he spent, he's worked hard, but he's had 13% unproductive time. Along with that, he's had only 33% of developer tool time, which is not a good sign for me because he's a developer and he should be spending at least 50% of his time on developer tools. If you're spending too much time on communication, it's definitely a concern. So as you can see, he spent two hours on Slack, which is not very productive. He spent meet.google.com another one hour 29 minutes. So probably a lot of discussions have happened. Um, so there must be something going down in terms of some confusion or something. And similarly, if I see Abhishek's time, he's also another developer. As you see, he spent 64% of his time on developer tools, which is a good sign. Now I, I'm not limited to see this data only on a day-wise breakup. I can see this for the entire month because one day someone can be productive, other day someone may not be very productive. But looking at the whole month is actually going to give you a much better idea about you know how the person or how each member is performed. Mm -hmm. So here, as you see over here, Varun's time is one hour fifty one fifty three hours, which is not bad considering we have all, almost like eight into five forty hours. 14 to 4, 160 hours. So 153 hours I've clocked out of which how much time I spent on which categories. And Abhishek is definitely clocked a good amount, 168 hours, 77% on developer tools, good, good uh, figure to have. Similarly, and I can filter this out by teams as well. If I filter this out by web developer and mobile team, I'll straight away get only the web developers over here now. So Hitesh has spent 96 hours working, 15% was unproductive. And if I want to overlay the number figures, I can do that as well. If I just want numbers rather than having the percentages, I can do that. 
and now if i go down you'll be able to see on a company level what all are your most important categories where are people spending the most amount of time what are the urls that people are spending the most amount of time what are the in out times so let's say if i want to just look at the attendance data in terms of how much time have they worked so let's say if i filter this out by the team and select the web developer and mobile team so on each day i'll get to know the in time out time logged hours and missing hours or overtime hours so yesterday as you can see prashant had missed his hour mark by 5 hours 7 minutes uh somni missed or she had applied actually she was not well so she's not been applied for a sick leave also so that's why it's missing over here and even overtime comes over here so we believe in compensating people when they're working extra so overtime hours also are reflected over here and you get to see in time out time logged hours and in the weekly summary you get to see a nice summary of how much time the people really worked uh a week on week and has their performance been improving or has it been reducing and so on you get to see for even for different teams again same way team filters can be applied and this is a really nice widget of resource utilization now if i want to see for the entire month again last month first to maybe uh 28th search by team name web developer and mobile and i filter this out let's say minimum hours 150 hours burnout hours 170 and i filter this out So now you'll be able to see. Okay, Shailesh has clocked in. Has uh, on an average, he starts his day very early at seven twenty-eight a.m. Uh, he ends his day quite. Uh, uh, so this is probably because he's worked on some night shifts and stuff. That's why it's showing as nine forty-eight a.m. as an out time. Shanu six thirty-three a.m. twelve seventeen p.m. three twenty-three. Everyone starts very early in our team actually. Um, so average hours are also known, and whoever's missed the mark comes in red. Whoever has made it to the optimal standards comes in blue, and whoever has been burnt out comes in purple. And it tells you this analytics, which is also available to you uh, in some other types of reporting. So you can actually see this from the employee analytics section also, uh, if you want to see the whole month of each user. So this is for me, ten seven. I started my day on Wednesday, ended at nine fifty six p.m. but even though that this is like probably 12 hours i worked only for 10 hours 9 minutes because there were idle periods in the day so depending on the idle periods it negates so as you see over here in the second on the second day it's 956 am started uh 11 11 pm ended but worked only for 5 hours 59 minutes because again idle periods i was probably very idle during the middle of the day so it does not matter when i start my login time log out time more important is whether i've had some deep work focus in my day or no and uh, this is another report that hr really loves which is timesheet analytics uh, wherein you get to know again for a month you want to understand capacity utilization so first to 28th i can check out this data uh, maybe i want to do this for the developer team again and i see total working days i see actual working days depending on the leaves and you know whatever holidays leaves etc taken by people expected hours the actual hours spent uh average hours that they have spent per day missing hours so this is basically uh how many hours have they missed the 180 mark by and uh the average start time average end time and there's this another thing also which is focus time which is your uh categorized hours so out of total hours out of 180 or 170 167 were categorized hours so this is where you get to know focus if someone has had a lot of uncategorized hours that is not a good sign so as you can see uncategorized hours are not too many for each of these members 12 hours is the maximum so this is basically non focus time got it yeah so this this report really helps you or helps the hr and we are able to push this report to your hrms system as well so Depends. so what happens if someone is working during a weekend putting in there few is, hours uh, yeah there is this concept of applying for an extra working day that you can do um but so, apply kyu karna hai suppose see this should be a tool that should be at the back end right it should keep recording what is happening but not like if every time if okay. i want to make someone work on a saturday and he or she has to record then okay so that that can easily be done in terms of if saturday sunday so there's something called work schedules if you create a work schedule or we pick up the work schedule from your existing system uh depending on the holidays the weekly offs uh allotted leaves and so on and shifts which shift do they belong to we can automatically know that if this is not a working day for this person so then automatically this if this person has worked extra on this day this day is something that has he or she has contributed more got it got it 
तो से ऑन अ सैटरडे इफ समन इज वर्किंग एंड और इज आंसरिंग टू ईमेल्स और डूइंग कम्युनिकेशन दैट विल गेट रिकॉर्डेड राइट ऑटोमेटिकली आई डोंट नीड टू So, so for four hundred users, it'll be um. So we work on a yearly pricing. Uh, so it's basically for four hundred users, it'll be three thousand rupees per user per year. So okay. for a user, it's approximately two fifty rupees per user per month, but it's billed annually because we believe that we want to work with customers who are working with us throughout the year. And just to share with you, and there's no additional charge over and above this. Everything is fixed, so that you know you're uh, basically no other sort of. a uh, charge in terms of setup or any support fees or anything of that sorts nothing is there you basically have uh, we update the software every month at least once so as you see february 27th we release an update then if you go back february 15th we release another update then 23rd and so on so every month you will get an update from our side so we believe that you we want you to use a product that's at least 12 times better as compared to what you were using uh, as we go along in the journey so which is why we prefer working with like uh companies that are on a yearly plans so we have slowly even phased out our quarterly plans or a half yearly plans as well hmm. got it yeah theek okay, hai i think varun this was good what i'll do is i will also uh, i'll put you in touch with uh, the uh, uh, with sham basically he heads our engineering okay. let him also go through it he will be back on thursday uh so maybe i'll uh, after this mail i'll introduce you with him so sure. but just give a demo to him so sure, sure. then i'll discuss with him and he will let you know the next steps sure okay sure 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 i'll send the recording as well so he can obviously take a look at the recording too sure sure, sure. so sure. don't worry about the recording i don't need it okay let uh, sham uh, see a demo for, uh, you know like i have seen probably okay. thursday or friday whenever sure. both of you are available sure and then let's take it on after that ठीक है शो शो साउंड्स गुड साउंड्स आई इंट्रोड्यूस यू विद हिम आफ्टर दिस थैंक यू सो मच थैंक्स अ लॉट फॉर योर टाइम थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू